Well, today we're going to debunk some myths because this is one of the most difficult things to do right now in 2018 is get a home if you're self-employed. All right, we'll go to the, oops, let's go to this first slide here. Go ahead, Gino, you have a good line for this. Yeah, so I see this slide that Don puts up here and I go, I know how to get a mortgage if you're self-employed. Jump in the DeLorean, head back to 2005, and voila, easy mortgage. <laughs> back to the future. <laughs> Stated income. And then you go see Doc. Oh, good dog, I got this for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, let's take a look at what it does take to get uh, approved for a self-employment. And let's take some consideration of what you should do. You should always, like we always say this, and take heed to our uh, recommendation. Meet with a mortgage planner. Meet with a professional who's going to evaluate your circumstances, look at all the information on this punch list here, and help tell you where you're possibly deficient. Don't assume that because you make a lot of gross income, you're going to be able to buy a home. And be very careful because if you just run to your bank, the bank may not be... Um, as well versed at self-employed borrowers mm -hmm. or your credit union. Oh, let me stop you there. We have a client right now. The bank gave them $40,000 as their total income to qualify and told them they didn't qualify. We gave them $147,000 to qualify. Okay. You think Again, that made a difference? Yeah, I bet you there, <laughs> there are certain ones that have to go cash flow analysis versus real analysis yep. and so forth. So there's certain ways, believe it or not, how certain banks or investors look at your tax returns, what can be added back, what has to be taken in, into account. So it's imperative that you provide all of this information and we'll run through it really quick because this is what a true mortgage professional goes through all this information to find out what's best for you. Right, so if you look at your personal tax returns, what the personal tax returns does for us is it gives us a list of questions to ask you, such as, you know, do you have a business? Well, if you have K-1s, you have a business. If you own more than 25% of that business, I need those tax returns. Or do you have any investment properties? If you have investment properties, that triggers a bunch of other paperwork. So basically, the personal tax returns is our checklist that helps us trigger what documentation we'll need to be able to evaluate your income. All right, and then maybe on your personal tax returns, you see an income coming in. You go, well, that's for my business. Well, show us your business tax returns. That basically uh, um, basically coincides and showing that, say you paid yourself $100,000. Oh, look, there's a business expense for $100,000 paid for to you. Yeah, here's a good one. Uh, and we'll jump over 4506, but let's jump real quick to profit and loss statements. Right now, because 2017 mm -hmm. is over, you will need to provide a 2017 profit and loss statement. Let me warn you. If you made 20% less than you did in 2016, you got a problem. Yes. So that's what they're looking for is to make sure that you just didn't have one good year. That's where you're purchasing. So your P&L has to make sense. Uh, we, we may need to see business bank statements. Uh, we are going to definitely uh, do a business verification. Yeah, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're – business is real, right? It can't be a shell corp. So you're either going to need a validation from a CPA, third-party validation by being all over the internet, Your business, or license. business license, registration with the Secretary of State, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this will validate that not only the business exists, but it is also that it's yours. All right. So we have a list of debts and minimal monthly payments as standard. Uh, cancel checks for your current rent or mortgage so we can utilize that. Okay, that's more on a jumbo loan. On yeah. a conventional loan, you won't need that. But on a jumbo loan, you'll need to prove that you made your rent payments for the tw last 12 months on time. All right. So bottom line is you can see that there's a lot of parameters that go into purchasing a home with self-employed. You can, There are options. There are also bank statement loans now, thank goodness. Basically, we look at your bank statements in the last 12 months or 24 months. There's also ones that can potentially use your most current um uh, bank, uh, sorry, tax return, as opposed to two years average. Maybe you were just building your business and last year was a really good year. So instead of averaging over two years, we can use your most recent year. Only a few investors do that and very few banks. So it's imperative, again, to talk to a mortgage lender that has multiple options for you. Yeah, you got to be super careful when it comes to the self-employed. You definitely want to work with a direct lender because we've got a lot of different programs, a lot of different banking institutions that we work with. Banks, really not their forte. They're really, they really want to put a lot of W-2 borrowers in their portfolio, easy peasy, uh, standard loans. With self-employed, you need an expert. And you mentioned bank statement loans. I think they're the wave of the future for 2018 mm -hmm. for self-employed borrowers. Uh, the interest rates have come down on them, but they're not going to be the same. So let's say you were looking for 4% or 4.5% with Fannie and Freddie. You're looking at 55 or something along those lines when you're looking at a bank statement program.
All right, so you heard it right here on the National Real Estate Cafe. You can always ask this question by emailing us at donandgino at gmail.com or find out more at donandgino.com if that's our hub.